Tala, do you have a capsule wardrobe? Putting together a capsule wardrobe can be a little bit difficult. Add on to that that it's gotta be a vintage capsule wardrobe that is hand knit, and I don't know how many others like it you would find out there, but that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. This will be making the first of a series of sweaters, skirts, and vests that will come together to create a vintage hand knit capsule wardrobe. If you want some more detail about where I got this idea from and what all the pieces are, feel free to watch my last video after this one as that covers everything to do with that. Today, we're going to be diving into the first of the set, which is going to be the Ladies Mazurka. Someone else pointed out in the other video that all of these different knitted pieces are named after different dances. So today's dance slash sweater is the Mazurka, which is this sweater that she's wearing underneath the cardigan right here. I will be knitting it in the original suggested color of red. However, I am not going to be using any kind of vintage yarn. Instead, I'm going to be using my lovely unraveler to unravel a merino red sweater, a merino wool red sweater, there we go, and reusing that to knit up this one. Also, so as a side note, if I didn't mention it this time yet, um, I am not doing all of this by hand. I am kind of. Does a knitting machine count as, I don't know, by knitting machine, which I still have to operate manually, but will be a lot less tiresome on my hands than knitting it manually by hand. The knitting machine is a huge component to all of this so that I could do this entire set of knits to make my capsule wardrobe without giving myself carpal tunnel or any other repetitive use injuries. The pullover pattern has a few options like the high neck or a round neck. I decided to go with the original design which had the lovely high neck. I like having a high neck sweater. I have a lot of round neck sweaters so I thought it would be nice to switch it up a little bit with a high neck sweater instead. The pattern also has a short sleeve and a long sleeve option and I'm doing neither because I prefer three quarter length sleeve, so I'm gonna be modifying the pattern a little bit to make it work for a three quarter length sleeve on me. Now, before we jump straight into using my knitting machine to knit up this lovely sweater, I wanted to see if I could get my machine attachments working. You may remember from a previous video that my knitting machine came with a few really fun attachments. And so before I start knitting away on this, I thought it'd be a good idea to see if I could get them to work for me. Join me in doing some fiddly work of taking apart <laughs> bits of the machine and cross your fingers that I don't lose any screws. I usually end up with like a baggie of screws and other parts of things that I didn't originally have when I take things apart and put them together. So <laughs> cross your fingers, it doesn't happen this time. What you are watching me lovingly and painstakingly trying to clean and degrease without taking it apart first here is what's called the rib transfer carriage. If this works, it would allow me to automatically move stitches from my ribber back to the main knitting bed, which saves a lot of time when I'm working on the bottom ribbing bit of the sweater, moving to the main portion of the sweater. So it would be awesome if I could get this to work. As far as I can tell though, as I'm looking at it, I've added some grease, I've cleaned it up. It's moving quite smoothly without it attached to the machine. But once I attach it to the machine, for some reason that little arm that's supposed to come down and pick up the stitches won't move. So it's time to disassemble it and look at it internally a little bit closer to see if I can figure out what is going on. What I discovered was pretty interesting and this is the mechanism that allows that handle to kind of come down and grab that stitch off of the ribber and then move it up onto the knitting machine and that kind of downwards motion that you're seeing here is what wasn't working when this is put on the machine which you can kind of see happening right here. That arm is not moving up and down because the little rivet is not moving in the channel at all. It turns out that my main issue was actually the spacing of the ribber to the main machine bed, which meant that I had to adjust that distance. It worked well when I was knitting, like it was within the knitting tolerances, but it wasn't within the tolerance for how this particular attachment would work on my machine. So I spent the next few hours crawling around on the ground, adjusting the machine, also losing pieces, as you can see that I'm looking for them right now, but eventually successfully readjusting the river bed so that the rib transfer carriage would work properly. If anyone else has this exact model and transfer carriage, here is where you can see that it is working properly. The little nubbins from the rib transfer carriage need to 
be able to go through those holes and then the arm will come down. If I hold it out of the way with my finger, you can see the arm doesn't come down. And now with the adjustment done, the arm will finally come down and hopefully maybe catch the stitches down below. Unfortunately, even with that fix in place, uh, my knitting machine bed, the little pegs are bent out of place and I can't straighten them. I don't have the strength or tools to do so. So there are still some points where the arm will not come down and it won't catch the stitches. So unfortunately, I'm not able to use that attachment quite yet. Trying to not let myself be too discouraged, I moved on to the automatic linker, which could help me automatically cast off my pieces, which would save me a lot of time. It had an issue with a walking gear at the top, which kind of just left the attachment stuck in one place. What it needed was taking apart, removing of the old frozen grease and replacing it with new grease. And you can see here that it walks down the machine bed perfectly. However, again, due to issues with some things being bent out of shape on my main bed, this doesn't work. So sadly, I've had to put the attachments aside for now and move on to making a lovely swatch for my sweater instead. And I'll just do the other bits manually rather than with my attachments. Though I think that you have to admit that that is a really cute swatch and I thought it was perfect. So it gave me a little bit more energy, even if I had to do those bits manually to sit down and start working on the separate panels that I needed for the Mazurka sweater. Do you want to tell them about the front panel? Oh. Detail is going to help me talk a little bit about this front panel. So we just took it off of the machine. Let me give you an idea of what the silhouette looks like. So here are the two shoulders. We have a rounded neckline with 22 stitches that are still live in the middle to join on to our collar. We have armhole shaping at both the left and right side. And then we go down into the ribbing. The ribbing has a little bit of that curly cues at the bottom because we haven't blocked it yet. And this is kind of what happens with the cast on method that I use. I know we just saw all of that kind of in fast forward. So for this next one, why don't I slow it down a little bit and we can go through not in the greatest of details, but just so you get a little bit better idea of what it's like to work with a knitting machine. The only thing is I have not that much left of my plied yarn. I haven't gotten around to plying the rest of my yarn. I might just be knitting three strands of the unplied yarn together in my knitting machine. Okay, new towels are ready to go, so I guess it's time for us to go to. Let's cast on. Well, I thought that the waltz from Swan Lake would be enough time to cover the making of an entire sweater panel, but we have just gotten done with the bottom ribbing portion. So let me see what else I can find for you to enjoy listening to while I continue on increasing for the body, getting to the underarms and then moving towards the shoulder shaping. <laughs>
Okay, now finally the sweater panel is done and it is super satisfying always to take the cast on comb off as the panel slips off so easily with a lovely finished edge. As we finish the main large panels, I don't think I have to walk you through in detail exactly how the sleeves are made, except that they're also knit from the cuffs up and are shaped like, well, sleeves that you would usually see in sewing patterns and you do two exactly the same way, just a little bit shorter because I like three quarter length sleeves. I love the fit of sweaters that are knit in pieces and then sewn up, but I really don't enjoy the sewing up process, which is why I'm really enjoying sewing up the pieces now on my knitting machine, which means that I have to first pick up all the stitches from the pieces that I want to join together onto the working needles with the right sides together. You kind of are thinking about it as if you're using the knitting machine as a sewing machine. So you're sandwiching it right sides together. You knit one row with a very, very high tension. So here you can see the two pieces that are on the needles together. Then you knit one row with a very, very loose tension, sorry, a low tension. And then you manually basically knit off the stitches or cast off the stitches from the machine. And then you have your two pieces stitched together. First example that you saw was sewing up the shoulders. This is adding the ribbing or turtleneck to the neckline, which is quite a lot larger of an opening, but it ended up working out pretty well. Good morning. Last night it might have been a little bit hard to see what exactly I was doing, but I was trying to show that I was connecting all of the different panels together and sewing up some seams. I nearly finished last night, so I put everything together except for one sleeve. So I need to sew up the... <laughs> the word won't come out. I need to sew up the seam of this sleeve and then I need to set the seam sleeve into place on the sweater. Okay, but that is just such an unfair tongue twister to sew the sleeve seam to set it in place in the sweater. Try to say that five times fast, but it's okay. We got there in the end. Anyway, last night I ended up doing the other sleeve seam by hand. Today I'm going to do it on my machine. I'll hang this seam onto the different needles on my machine. Then I will fold the sleeve up and I'll hang the matching parts of the other part of the sleeve on, I will knit one row across and then I will cast off. Let's go to the machine. what it looks like to join pieces together with this method. This is kind of what it looks like. It kind of looks like a chain stitch, but with this kind of joining method, I still had to set in the sleeve by hand, which is kind of the trickiest part. I think I'm gonna be trying a different sewing up order in the future, so I don't have to do this by hand. But at this point, all that's left on this sweater construction is to weave in the ends before I can show you the final reveal. incredibly pleased with this sweater. The red color is perfect. I absolutely love it. The yarn is so soft. I'm so thankful that I was able to reuse the yarn from that vintage merino wool sweater to make this one. And I'm really happy with the fit, the sleeve length, the collar, everything. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see the next item that I'll knit for my 1940s capsule wardrobe, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you all soon. Bye! You tell us. You good? <laughs> you making the chair ready for me? You sure it's ready? <laughs>